Sometimes on The Bike Show, we have the opportunity to bring you something exotic, something truly out of this world. Ducati is known for their sports bikes, but this is not sport. This is ruthless, vile vengeance. It is Ducati hitting back at everyone that ever doubted them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Panigale V4R. As it sits here, with the inclusion of that Acropovic racing exhaust, it costs nearly 800,000 Rand. It has a dry weight of just 173 kilograms. It has the latest in Brembo's dilemma braking. The Olin suspension is mechanical, not electronic, to save weight. It has a frame specially designed for this model. The fairing has cooling gills and is slightly wider for better aerodynamics. And it has wings. The same wings as those found on the 2016 Ducati MotoGP bike that were later banned under the guise of safety, but we suspect it was just the other manufacturers throwing a hissy fit. And with that Acropovic exhaust, this bike pushes a physics bending 231 horsepower at a red line of 16,500 RPM. We have to ride this bike, hopefully with minimal depth, and I'm grateful I don't have to do it alone. With me is Ride Fast Magazine's Rob Portman, whom we have always thought of as a real racer, and more. So what we essentially have here is what people think a Ducati sports bike owner looks like, <laughs> and what a Ducati sport bike owner really looks like. <laughs> it was an icy morning at Red Star, and I didn't feel like crashing an 800,000 Rand bike on a cold track, so I charitably let Rob go first. The launch control has three levels, depending on how brave you feel. And if that doesn't make you feel MotoGP enough, there's also a pit lane limiter. I feel like a MotoGP rider. How do you turn it off? There we go. Beyond the wings, Ducati has taken a large chunk of its aerodynamic technology from the MotoGP project, even if this bike doesn't look like the MotoGP machine. Back in the day, it was all about being tiny. And these days, it's all about aerodynamics. It needs to be a wide machine. and the you look at the Moto GP bikes, they're also wide, much like this. For World Superbikes, Ducati has had to reduce the capacity of their 1100cc V4 and yet keep the horsepower. For this goal, they lightened the crank and added titanium conrods. More so, they reduced the stroke of the motor to make the 1000cc maximum limit. The result of all this is that the power is actually increased, and on this bike it now pushes a staggering 231 horsepower. But more than that, as an engineer will tell you, if you decrease the stroke, you get revs. Lots of revs. I thought I was at rev limit a little while ago. I looked down, I was at 14, I had 2,500 RPM to go. Hard on the brakes. Oh, those new monoblocks from Brembo are amazing. Lean it in. This bike will make the top racer glow with joy and no doubt set lap records. And yet, Ducati has changed their ways of late. They are no longer aiming their offspring at only the pro racer. I can ride it slow, I can ride it fast, it's all good. Ducati has modified the top frame section on the V4R, removing chunks of aluminium to give it flex and help it turn in. You might not be able to see this modification from the outside, but you can certainly feel it working. Turn in. That. People mocked Ducati when they first introduced wings to their MotoGP bike, stating that they will serve no function in the real world. And yet, this is the real world, and we have wings, the same as those found on the Vizioso's 2016 MotoGP bike. Their aim is to stop acceleration stunting wheelies, something that is a reality on a 231 horsepower bike. And Ducati say that at 270 km per hour, the wings exert a force of 30 kilograms on the front wheel. That is not something to be sneezed at. The V4S even in third gear picks up the front wheel. Whereas this thing, it'll wheel in first, a little bit in second, and then that's it. I don't know whether that's talk or those wings actually doing something, but it's doing something. And so, 
With the riding done, we did what track riders do best, settle down at the canteen and wait for lunch. So we rode the V4S and at that stage we thought it was the greatest thing ever since I don't think it's ever been something as great as that. No, there hasn't been. You, you no. rode that, that V4S and we both went to the world launch and we've ridden it here. And every time I've ridden that bike, it's just you, wild. You get off and you think to yourself, how is this possible? How are the laws of physics? How is whatever created this earth? How does it allow <laughs> something as good as this? To the mass market yes, as well, to how, anyone how with a bike they, license. How do they make something as good as this? And then they come out with a V4R. Which is a thousand cc. Yes. Compared to the 1100 cc, yes, and it just makes it look like a 600. Yeah, but how did <laughs> I don't know how they do it. You know yeah. what the thing is? They, for homologation, Ducati were, were pretty upright. We are building a world superbike dominator that yes. is going to dominate world superbikes. We are putting an X MotoGP yes. rider on it, and we're going to dominate. Yes. We have to, for homologation purposes, put headlights, a tail light, and mirrors on it. It's like grudgingly. Which, you know, <laughs> which like, every oh. owner of a V4R, as we found out, it's the first thing they take off is yes. the mirrors and the race kit's about to go on it and that. So they, they, they've achieved their goal in setting out that we've seen it so far with Batista yes. and just I, riding it. I felt like Batista. In, in your opinion, how much better is it than the S? Well, I was saying to, to one of the guys here talking about it as we asked the same question. And to me, S is an amazing package, but the electronic suspension just takes away a little bit of control. This year, we came in, Leroy from Adrenaline, and we said, the front end's floating about one or two clicks here and you could feel it instantly. Well, so nothing enough, beats that touch is, suspension. You know, in the race bikes, they don't use electronic suspension because mm -mm. it weighs too much. Mm. You need and it's big servers serious. and big everything and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for race bikes, they don't. But I mean, I kind of make sense because I saw Leroy, he got out a big C-spanner. <laughs> I think I would just injure myself if I try to use that thing. So I'm okay with the electronic buttons. Um, okay, it's, it's, this bike with the exhaust pipe is nearly 800,000 Rand. Yeah. Is it worth nearly 800,000 yes. rand? Yes. Straight away, yes, I would own one <laughs> happily. You know what it is? You just, you walk around the machine and it just, everywhere is, it's just passion and just gloriousness. I don't even know if that's a word. <laughs> gloriousness. <laughs> well, we'll make it a word. Why not? But here's the thing. Okay. Ducati are so good at this, at making these sort of aspirational motorcycles where, okay, for, we, we'll never afford one. Never. Most people watching this, I'm sure, will never be able to afford one. But you're, you're glad Ducati's making it anyway. It's, we are so privileged to live in an age where we are exposed to motorcycles like this. And yeah. you know where I do kind of feel, and Ducati have also been the pros at doing this. If you bought a Speciale, V4 Speciale last year for the same amount, kind of 800 grand. <laughs> or maybe a Superleggera. You must be hating life because yeah. this V4R will destroy those bikes and it's roughly the same price. You see, they're going to the really rich guys who are going to buy a Speciale and then immediately go and buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Ducati have just yeah. built a machine that anyone can enjoy like even the owner of this bike he's improved his lap times he don't run the bike twice he's improved yeah. his lap times by almost seven seconds you know honda have always had the ideal chassis the user-friendly chassis the super bike for the mass market and then you had the bms with the horsepower and that so each bike kind of had their little touch point to caddy have built a bike that's got user-friendly chassis yes. massive amounts of horsepower that is easily controllable and electronics and suspension that actually when you make changes you can feel them and they work we went from traction control three, which hampered the bike a bit. I kind of gave it 100% throttle and the traction control took over and, you know, kind of not gradually took me out of the turn. Yeah. I put it to traction control one and it was a whole like, new animal. Previous generation bikes that were also, wow, you can't get any better. Yeah. Now it just seemed completely it's silly. It's so much more dialed. Okay, I'm going to ask something else now. Bautista, at the time of filming this, has won, what's it, 11, 11. out of 11 races? Yes. Is it because the bike is so good? It's a combination of a very good MotoGP rider that was running top five, top seven, five months ago on a purpose-built World Superbike Dominator. Ducati, thank you very much. Many good things to come.